Good evening and welcome to All Saints Church in Marple to a very, very special Carols by Candlelight service. Uh, my name is Daniel Curry and I'm the vicar here at All Saints Church and we're in the southeast of, I suppose, Manchester really, just on the edge of the Peak District for those of you who don't know where Marple is. Uh, it's a fabulous place. If you're joining us uh, for the first time this evening, you are truly welcome. You can make comments as you go, uh, as, you, as you're looking on Facebook, please do. And in fact, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to make some comments. The theme for our carol service tonight is hope is born. Hope is born. And uh, in preparation for this, I did a Zoom call with uh, people in our church and just asked them one question. What are you hoping for in 2021? What are you hoping for in 2021? So as you listen uh, to, this, uh, to these people answering that question, maybe you'd like to uh, share what you're hoping for in 2021. When I was a quite a new parent one of the rules that I read somewhere was don't make your children be afraid to live in their world and I would hope that children will get back their childhood and with the Lord's help learn not to live in fear. I guess like most people um, I'm looking forward to a, a fresh new start a start where we recalibrated somehow how we feel and what we expect of the world to give us, that we will give more, that we'll share more, and that people will be kinder to each other. I pray that we may start listening to each other, um, as we have begun to do in during during COVID and during isolation. But we we we've lost over the last year, the last few years how to disagree well. And I, I pray that we start being able to listen to other people's fears and wishes and that we can reconcile those with our own. Mine is very simple, just to give and receive hugs. That's what I'm looking forward to in 2021. I'm hoping that we can travel to somewhere exotic to celebrate our 45th wedding anniversary. But, but just to travel unfettered, really, to far-flung places to visit family and friends and um, to be in a football crowd again. I'm hoping that all families can be reconciled, whether it be physically or mentally, spiritually. The people that have perhaps uh, argued will get on together. And I'm hoping that people will carry on caring and sharing as they've done this year. We've um, really missed um, opening the doors of our home to our, our family and our friends. So we're looking forward to, to being able to enjoy them in our own home again. How, how we've missed um, worshipping and praying together in 2020. We've, we've done it online, which has been fantastic, and lots of people have joined us. But how lovely it will be to get back uh, in, a, in, in church and worshipping and learning together, praying together, giving each other hugs and um, just being together. And we thank God that uh, he's not been apart from us this time um, in 2020. Uh, and he continues to be with us. Um, I just want to be free to travel within this country to go down and see the family we've left behind down south and all the friends we left behind. I'm looking forward to seeing them all again. I'm hoping for a safe and effective vaccination to protect everybody. We're really looking forward to the community spirit that's been developed both locally in our own roads and around Marple building and growing during 2021. So I wonder what you're hoping for for 2021 at home. And like I say, you might want to put that on the chat, but just before we begin now, let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that in Jesus, hope is born and hope is given. And we want to pray that tonight, 
Lord Jesus, by your Spirit, you would just come afresh upon our hearts, upon our minds, and upon our lives. As we come to worship you this night, we pray for your presence, your living presence, to come upon us now, to refresh us and to restore us in your hope. Amen. All the carols that we'll sing tonight will be unannounced, except this first one, which is, O come, all ye faithful.
Matthew 1, 18 to 23. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Sing. 
Chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood among them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, They made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And did it happen that in a stable long ago, a weary couple who no one wanted to know should choose a manger in spite of danger to hold and hallow the Lord below? And did it happen in the stillness of the night The woman laboured to let God see the light and bathed and dressed him, breastfed and blessed him. 
the word incarnate, whose time was right. And did it happen? The news, the news of the first reached the poor, compelled by angels to tiptoe to the door and see no trappings, just linen wrappings, a child for certain and God for sure. And did it happen? that this was really meant to be, that God from distance should choose to be set free and show uniqueness transformed in weakness, that I might touch him and he touch me. Bye. 
For any of you who have seen a nativity, you probably know the Christian story. 2,020 years ago, two people, Mary and Joseph, journeyed from their hometown in Nazareth to Bethlehem. And there was absolutely no room there. And so they found themselves in a simple abode with a stable. Nine months before this journey happened, Mary's world had literally been turned upside down when when the angel Gabriel came and visited her. And he told her, you shall have a child. How would this be, she said to Gabriel, for I am a virgin. Yet in her humility, in her humble obedience, she says, let it be according to your word. And so her obedience leads her here, to this stable. In the mess, in the muck and in the mire, she gives birth to her firstborn son and names him Jesus, wraps him up and places him in the manger. I wonder in the exhaustion and in the mess whether she really understood the magnitude of what was happening here. That heaven was touching earth. That the words of the prophet Isaiah, 700 years said before this birth, are being fulfilled. The virgin shall conceive and she shall have a son and will call him Emmanuel. And as our eyes turn towards the manger, that word Emmanuel is what speaks to us today. That God is with us. In this year of covid within our lives, in the mess and muck of what's been going on in this last year. Here is a promise that God is with us and meets us in the anxiety, in the loneliness, in sometimes the despair, in the unprecedented times. Here in the manger, hope is born. For here we come to the real reason of why we celebrate celebrate Christmas. The shepherds knew the reason. The angels had told them, the one living in the manger is the saviour who is Christ the Lord. Tonight we join with those shepherds and marvel and celebrate with the birth of Jesus because he enters fully into our mess into the risk of humanity, into the uncertainty, into the unprecedented times that we have today and says, I am with you. I love you. I have come to save you, even if that costs me everything. By his life, Jesus shows us that nothing needs separate us from his love. His life on earth brought peace and healing, forgiveness and hope to anyone who came and welcomed him into their lives. And today is the same. If we in the quiet of our, of our lives ask Jesus to come in, hope can be born in us today. All we need to do is to recognise that Jesus is is knocking on the door of our hearts, asking to come in. When we open, when we open those hearts and ask him in, we suddenly realise again that God is with us. This Jesus born 2,020 years ago is once again alive in our hearts. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Said the night wind to the little lamb. 
Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. With a tail as big as a kite. Do you see what I see? 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 Joy to the world. Do you see what I see? Joy to the world. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, and then 9 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Trying to get simple messages across in memorable ways has been a hallmark of 2020. Stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. Stay alert, control the virus, save lives. Eat out to help out. Build back better. All of these slogans try to instill hope. 
that if we do the right thing now, the future will be brighter. Build Back Better, I think, has quite a nice double edge to it. Sure, this has been a tough year, and we're certainly not out of the woods yet. But when things get back on their feet, wouldn't it be great if some of the really positive things we've seen flourish in 2020 in terms of community and people pulling together and so on, wouldn't it be great if they remained? The outpouring of goodwill, for example, through food banks or people catering for staff who work in the NHS has literally kept the country going on some occasions. And don't we all want less pollution, a slower pace of life, more time for people, stronger communities? We all want to build back better. And whilst no one, I'm sure, would have wanted this wretched virus to visit us, it has brought us to something of a turning point in the way we think about organising our lives and our communities. John's words, which Janet has read, are filled with an optimism that describes Jesus as light coming into the world, changing things for the better, some good news for people of his time who were weary of Roman occupation and all the oppression and darkness it brought to their lives. Not everybody welcomed that because Jesus turned out to be someone who spoke truth and challenged corruption very directly. And of course, this made him some enemies. But for others, Jesus and his teaching announced a change of direction so dramatic and positive that it could be described as really like a whole new life beginning, which is why people who believe in him and accept his teaching are said to become children of God, that the change is that positive and radical. So 2,000 years on from that story that we've read and which we celebrate at Christmas, its message is still up to date. We're certainly not the first people who are yearning for hope and wanting to build back better. We've thought this evening, haven't we, about what people are hoping for on that beautiful video we had at the start, the great groundswell of emotion as people hope for being able to hug or not wear a mask or see someone close up or do some of those things of which we've been deprived this past nine or ten months. Of course, we place a lot of hope in the rollout of the vaccine and economic recovery, and we pray that those things are a great success. But we know, I think, from the breathing space we've experienced this year, that it's very possible to quickly fill our lives again with more stuff, more things, more activity. And ironically, perhaps we've become aware that the fuller we are in our calendar and our shopping habits and so on, the emptier it is possible to feel. Over the course of his life, Jesus did and taught amazing things. For people who were fed up and weighed down by life's anxieties and burdens, he said, come and learn from me, learn from me, and I will give you a type of rest that you will feel and experience deep down inside yourself, in your soul. I will fulfill that hope and that yearning for rest that the human spirit craved then and craves now. His message was good news then, and it continues to be good news now. If you ask questions about how full lives can feel so empty, I would love for you to join us on our Alpha course to begin in the new year. Alpha is, um, is a very interesting discussion-based course 
and we're going to run it on Zoom. Um, if circumstances allow, we may run some sessions in person towards the end, but certainly we'll be beginning on Zoom on the 17th of January. And I'd like us now to watch a brief video giving an introduction to the Alpha course. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. My girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible, but the truth is none of us are. I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself, you can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith and meaning. I just wanted to say, if you would like to explore those questions of life, of faith, uh, and if you'd like to discuss and just think about those, I, I imagine some, some of us in this time of COVID, it has been a time of reflection. Can I just warmly invite you to join the Alpha course on uh, Sunday, the 17th of January? And to do that, all you need to do is drop us an email at office at allsaintsmarple.co.uk. So I'll say that again, office at allsaintsmarple.co.uk. If you'd like to join an Alpha group on Zoom in the comfort of your own home, have a chat and discuss about uh, questions of life and faith, then please do just drop us an email. Okay, we're going to pray now for our world and Leslie's going to lead us in our prayers. Can we pray together? The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus, light of the world, bring comfort to those in need of it. Be a beacon where hope is in short supply. We pray for all who are struggling at this time, those who are grieving those who are sick and unwell, either physically or mentally. Strengthen and heal them and shine a light in the darkness. Jesus, light of the world, in a world where many walk in darkness, fleeing conflict, violence or insecurity, shine as a great light of hope. We pray for refugees in all corners of the world. 
would you accompany them on their journey and move us to show them compassion. Let your light shine before others. Jesus, light of the world, help us to reflect your light and be a force for good in the darkness. Thank you for all those who work for the good of society, even in the midst of this time of COVID. Inspire us all. May we light the way for those in need. We pray in your name. Amen. May the power of God protect us and heal us. And may the presence of God bring us peace and hope. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. And the blessing of the peace child be with you this Christmas. Amen. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say is have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, we are going to have a service here at 8.30 in the morning. Um, we've got a capacity of about 60 people for a communion uh, service. But we'll also be having a, a 10.15 online service if you'd like to join us. Uh, it's a bit more civilised, that one. Um, but if you'd like to join us uh, on Facebook Live, again, we'll be broadcasting that from the vicarage. But if we don't see you, have a fantastic Christmas and a Christ-filled Christmas. Amen. We're going to finish uh, by having a little look at this video again.
Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Said the night wind to the little lamb. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. With a tail as big as a kite. Do you see what I see? 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 Joy to the world. Do you see what I see? Joy to the world. What can I give him? Poor as I am. If I were a shepherd. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see?